The second video is the importance of spiritual strength. In the first, which was titled Separation of Church and State Fallacy, we talked about how a faith always guides the system, and do we want it to be a strong faith, like our Christian foundation, or a weak faith based on liberalism, humanism, relativism, and environmentalism? So we're going to talk about the importance of spiritual strength here for the survival of a country or for a culture. And we're going to start with Plato. Plato's goal was justice. And associated with that is truth. I put that up there as well. If you have justice, you typically have truth. And Plato in his book, The Republic, talked about three principles. They're listed over here, rational, appetitive, and spirit. The rational is reason, thinking, analyzing, learning. The appetite of his desire, whether it's eating or drinking or sleeping or finding pleasure. The third is the spirit. This is not spiritual in a religious sense or talking about faith, but it's passion about whatever people might have passion for. He associated each of these with a social class. The first is the ruling class because they study, they're smart, allegedly, they're intelligent, and those types of things. The second is the trader class. That's pretty much everybody else in whatever job. And the third is the military class. They take that spirit, that desire for combat, for competition, and they bring it to the military. He then ties these classes into a trait. <clears throat> the ruling class is wise. And again, I say allegedly. If we look at our culture and our leaders, most of whom are trained in the Ivy League schools, they're really guiding our country into uh, self-destruction. But we won't get into that too much with this video. The second class is temperance. It's balancing all those desires and pleasures and whatnot. If you have balance, then you have stability. And the third, of course, military class, they're valiant. They're courageous when they go out to battle. And, and again, they like the idea of combat and competition. In this video, we're going to focus on the principles, the rational, the appetitive, the spirit. Plato, his focus was the rational versus the appetitive. And his belief was if reason or the rational wins, then the individual and the state has stability. Again, if people are smart, they're intelligent, they're wise, they study, you know, if, if in our culture, if we, you know, study math and science, we'll master the universe or something like that. That's, that's kind of where we are today with the rational piece of education, which, you know, education isn't bad by any means. But his focus was if that dominates, you can control the appetite of. People will take that ability to think and reason and control themselves as individuals. However, there's a problem in Plato's analysis. And Plato's folly is this. He disregards the spiritual. Now, he talks about the spiritual a little bit in his book, but his focus is on the rational, the ability to think through things and solve problems. He focuses on man's ability and man's knowledge. We can do it all on our own, and once we do that, society will be fine. Well, we can see in the 21st century, we are far from fine. There's another battle here. The real battle, in my opinion, is this, spiritual versus the emotion. He disregards the spiritual. I put the spiritual at the forefront in place of rational. Emotion and feelings, that's not too different from his idea of appetite. Because in our, in our culture today, people feel like, I feel like this. I feel I should do this. I have this feeling on this topic. There's not a whole lot of thinking involved. It's all emotion and feelings, and they act based on their feelings, and their feelings can change on a dime, and this year they may feel this way about a topic, and three years later they may feel a different way about the same topic. So it's spiritual versus emotional. If the spiritual is dominant, then you will have a strong rational mind. If spiritual dominates, the rational also dominates. They coexist together, but the spiritual supersedes the rational. Here, if the emotion dominates, then that's in line with Plato, the appetite of again. So I put Plato's words down here. That rational is subordinate to spiritual. Appetite of is supportive to the, or, uh, subordinate to the emotion and the feelings. If spiritual is strong, you have moral strength. Otherwise, you have moral weakness. You have the ability to make good decisions if you're spiritually strong. You want to make good decisions to the best of your ability. You might not be perfect. Society will never be perfect. Otherwise, you have moral weakness. When spiritual dominates, 
absolute morals dominate. When the emotions dominate, relativism dominates. And libertinism, libertinism, absolute liberty. Do whatever you want, whenever you want, to whomever you want. There's no restrictions. There's no restraints. That's what libertinism is. And that's where emotions and feelings lead you. And when we talked about in the first video, the separation of church and state fallacy video, some of our moral struggles today, this is where they're coming from. They're coming from relativism, a weak spiritual foundation, and emotion and feelings dominating our culture. Finally, in the last one, or in the first one, freedom thrives. In the second one, tyranny rises. Let's think about it this way. Guns are a hot button issue. Every time there's a shooting, the first thing you hear is we've got to place more restrictions on gun owners. The issue is this. If you have a strong spiritual base, you're going to have moral strength. Freedom's going to thrive. People will be able to control themselves under that type of situation. And the large percentage do, by the way. However, if you have a weak spiritual base and moral weakness dominates and relative, relativism, you have more people engaging in that type of behavior, that type of terrible action, and now the government has to restrict everybody else or thinks it has to by passing more, more stringent laws. But the problem isn't the laws or the lack thereof. The problem is the spiritual strength. So if you have spiritual strength, you don't have those problems as often. When I was in school, high school, we did not have a school resource officer. All the doors were unlocked. We didn't have metal detectors as you do today. People are afraid. There's more struggles today because our spiritual base is weak. If you have spiritual strength, you have stability and moral strength. Otherwise, you struggle because of what goes on over here. And of course, this is perpetuated by liberals who are socialists as well, who are humanists, environmentalists, and relativists. Let's talk about Solomon a little bit. Solomon and uh, Plato, I guess they were somewhat far apart from each other. Solomon was in the 900s BC. Plato was, I guess, late 300s to early 400s BC. But Solomon said this in Ecclesiastes. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. He recognized he couldn't figure it out on his own. He couldn't study and, and find all the answers. Even with our technological advancements these days, science and math and whatever, we still can't solve all the problems on our own. And Solomon recognized that. He also said, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. He knew you had to have an, uh, obedience to somebody besides yourself. There is a higher power. There is a creator. His creator was God, the Christian God. And if you follow him, that will help you solve your, your struggles. So what's going to take for national survival? <clears throat> it's going to take spiritual strength. If we have spiritual strength, the rational will dominate. That's the mind. We will have high morals based on absolutes. Again, we won't be perfect, but we will have high morals. We will have stability as a nation, and we will have righteousness. On the other hand, if we continue down this road of spiritual weakness, emotions and feelings will dominate. That's the flesh, desire, pleasure, all those things. We will have relativism and low morals where anything goes. We will have instability. We will have weakness. And when we talk about stability, it's very simple. Isaiah said, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is your treasure. It's his treasure. So wisdom and knowledge is wisdom and knowledge that we acquire from a higher being stronger than us. And that is spiritual strength. That's what it's going to take to have national survival. So the importance of spiritual strength. Our nation was founded upon Christian principles, a Christian faith. We were strong. We had moral superiority at one time. Over the last 50 to 60 years, at least, we've now followed down the road of spiritual weakness, and we're facing the consequences of that today. The question is, how far do you want that to go? You think we're at the end of the road? Who knows what will happen next, unless we return to our spiritual strength, which will allow us to establish a return to a stable, a more stable society. The next video is called Freedom Clarified.